Hello everybody, in this video demo, I would like to demonstrate how we can bring a Rhino CAD model into Blender version 3 plus for further rendering and visualization works. Okay, let's start. Before I begin, I would like to talk about the advantages of doing so. Firstly, both Rhino and Blender share a similar rendering engine core cycles. If you go to file properties, on Rhino, you can see that there is this tab called Cycles, which is used to establish the setting for this rendering engine. And this rendering engine cycles is used to produce the ray trace display mode. Okay, over here, as you can see. And if you want to head over to Blender, you can see that yeah, Blender is also using Cycles. So this is a very important information because it means that we can bring the material fairly accurately into Blender okay, without much tweaks. So this is one of the advantage. Okay. The other advantage is that Blender can produce our superior rendering and animation outputs. And of course, being free, it's not going to cost us a penny. Okay. Now uh, let's head over to the scene. Okay, as you can see on screen, I have already created a model which is um, built more or less to scale, okay, which is the furniture. And I would like to export this model to Blender. And what I can do is to use the inbuilt library to assign the basic material which can later be ported over to Blender as well, fairly similarly. Okay, so to do that at the command prompt type libraries, uh, you might want to switch either to the rendered or the ray trace mode for an accurate display. I think I'll just use the rendered. And the library consists of render content folders, which houses all the different materials. For example, the metallic materials, the plastics, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign plastic material to this main body maybe this okay i just drag over and then maybe over here um metallic material so let's go to metal maybe polish maybe this okay yeah so once this is done we can start to our export there are several formats that can be used okay uh popular ones are like obj and fpx Personally, I would prefer FBX as the export format because of uh, better integration with Blender in terms of the size and the material output. Okay, so um, let's have the model selected and go to File, Export Selected, and then make sure that you are selecting the Motion Builder or FBX format for export. And I'm going to give it a name, let's say Chair. Click save and then you'll be presented with this option. Okay, you might not need to export the lights. Okay, I'll uncheck the lights and I also will uncheck the export view. If you click on this export view, you export additional camera views which um, are not required and actually will make the export a bit complicated as well. So I'm going to uncheck this and I think just leave this uh, setting will do and click OK. And then you will be prompted with the option to set the mesh density. Okay, there are like two different ways to do it. There's a simple control and a more detailed control. Let's just uh, try the simple control. Okay, so if I were to drag this, let's say, let's say here. Okay, and I can click the preview and let's see whether it's giving us a good result. Okay. Seems fine. You, you can see over here uh, this result is not desirable so you can play with the slider over here to, to give you the desired result so this one may be better and if you are using the detail control like I say I just give you a demo I click on detail control personally I would like to use this okay maximum distance edge to surface maybe 0 0.01 and you can click the preview to see the result 
take a while. Yeah, wow, it's just pretty dense. What about 0 0.1? Okay, I say I'm quite happy with this um, density. I can click OK to export the meshes. Okay, and then let's head over to Blender now. Okay, I've already um, opened a scene with the studio setup. By the way, this studio setup is included in the Cat to Blender visualization book series, which I have created. And if you want to know more about them, you can click on the label over here. Okay. So this studio setup is included in the book. Okay. So what I'm going to do is use this to set the lighting. The first thing you want to do is to bring the cursor to a location that is uh, indicative of the insertion position of the model. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I uh, just set the cursor to the world origin. I'm going to press the W key and then uh, snap cursor to world origin. Okay, depending on how you set the key map, right, you might I uh, have to either use the W key or the right mouse click okay, to set the cursor to world origin. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, for my case, I'm going to press the W key and use a snap cursor to world origin. Okay, so it's move here and I can proceed to import the model in. Okay, I can go to file, import, FBX, and let's just bring the model in. model is in okay it's fairly small and I think what I'm gonna do is let's just scale down the rest of the scene I'm gonna press the S key scale the stuff down a little bit Go to the full ball view mode, okay? Yeah, and you can um adjust the camera view to your desired angle. Another way of setting the camera view is to at the user perspective view, rotate to that view that you want. Let's say something like that, okay? And then go to view align view okay and set this align active camera to view and you get something like that and then this allow for uh, easier alignment so what i'm going to do is i'll uh, with the camera selected right just just uh come here set to the normal and then you can just adjust the camera to get to your desired um angle okay If I want to establish assembly to, to the model, uh, what I can do is to use the parent-child system within uh, Blender to set the hierarchy. Okay. To do that, okay, let, let me just uh, demo. Firstly, you got to select the, the child object and press the shift key and then the last object to be selected will be the parent object. So I'm going to press this, press the shift key and then Press Ctrl plus P and set parent to object keep transform. Okay, with that done right, if I were to only select the parent, the child object will also correspondingly uh, be transformed. Okay, for example, let me show you. Let's say if I want this uh, whole chat to be bigger, I can just select the parent object. Maybe I just move this a little bit more. Press the S to scale this. Yeah, I can press S to just scale. I can see that the child object is also scaling accordingly. Okay. Okay, and if you want to further tweak the materials, you can go to the shading workspace. 
to do further tweaking work you can go to this shading mode and because i'm using cycles i want to set this to cycles okay so that we can see uh the realistic representation of course you got to select this this uh, shading mode, okay and you can see over here um this is the shader and you can like make changes to it to to uh, set the materials vector okay and if you already have established a material library you can open up the material library using the asset browser and then simply assign the material over to your object okay so in this case maybe i want this and maybe this i want it to be this material okay yeah but either way this this are uh, basic material setup is already included in the get to blender books okay okay with that i come to the end of this demo hope this has been useful see you bye